SLPP's infighting intensifies, Namal on his own. Provoking NPP and Dilith's support, an omen at Gangaramaya, SLPP breakaways to leave country. The leader, Deshita Magakiana, Prorti Pelagasma. SLPP's infighting intensifies, Namal on his own. As infighting in the SLPP now coming out into the open, Namal's line of thinking is apparent from a Facebook post by his theoretician, Iranda Ginij. He blames their collision with a group within who tries to elect president from an opposing party in the event the SLPP loses the next election. Accusing Ranil of deeply dividing the party that voted him to office, Giniga says their aim is to strengthen their ideology and then elect a leader and a government of their own. But this particular group strikes deals with the UNP, plans to elect its leader, the president, and share cabinet positions. It is very dishonourable, humiliating and unpleasant. On that account, other rival parties are way ahead of the SLPP. They are not cowards to get their parties to kneel down in front of the leader of a rival party, he laments. Their illogical excuse is that since Ranil was made president by the SLPP, it should campaign to elect him again. Ranil was made premier, and president later, by Aragalaya, not that the SLPP wanted to see him so. Aragalaya was an unusual situation, a political conspiracy, which demanded unusual decisions. SLPP leaders made that very clear then. Ranil is completely against SLPP policies, and the UMP is the main rival, both of which can never be brought together, says Ginnigay. What those who support Ranil do now is sell the country's assets hiding behind the IMF pact. The next people's uprising will come against that. Then I too will take to the streets, he says. Those who recognise Ranil and his policies should obtain UNP membership, Ginnigay says. In an attempt to promote Namal, he says he respects him much because he keeps it straight and appears firmly for his ideology. That is leadership. All those who believe in the SLPP's indigenous ideology should stand behind Namal, he adds. Claiming Gota is still the elected president, Ginnigay says he too has a responsibility to rise up against this injustice. Referring to Minister Prasanna and his lot, he goes on to say that those sons of Ranil were behind the conspiracy to oust the Rajapaksas. If they want to correct that heinous mistake, they should work to elect a president from the SLPP, he adds. There has been no reaction from Prasanna's side to this barrage of strong words. Neither Namal denies that to be their stand, but he has decided to field Damika as the candidate if Ranil fails to get a big portion of SJB MPs to support him by 15th June. With Namal evidently on a journey of his own, a further division of the SLPP is highly likely. Critics note a thing should happen to know its outcome. But that may be too late by then. Many in the SLPP could suffer politically, excepting Namal. That is because his target is 2030. Provoking NPP and Dilith's support. MJP leader Dilith wants to provoke the NPP and score some marks. He tries his best to get tangled with AKD. Summoning some journalists on the 23rd, Dilith said he was certain Sajith would never face AKD in the debate proposed for Zoe 6 June. He has never attended a TV debate. He said that is why he challenged AKD for a face-off. After targeting SLPP votes previously, he is now adopting a nationalist line to run the game along with his ilk. Ex-East Governor Yahampath is the trump card, with speculation rife that she is to be made the candidate of the Nationalist Alliance. But, after having a few drinks with friends, Dilith says things totally different. Responding to a previous remark by Rajitha, he said Ranil is his spiritual leader. He wants Ranil to retire and give him the opportunity of running for the president. Chinthana Dharmadasa, in a Facebook post, says although he never believed in stars previously, he has to believe what he sees now. Referring to Dilith, he says he has been made to walk on the streets eating hoppers. An omen at Gangaramaya. Gangaramaya in Hunupitiya is considered a bastion of the UNP. In short, it is Ranil's temple. Every time he became the PM, and even when he was made the president, he first went there to receive blessings. 
The Gangaramaya Vesak zone was inaugurated by Raniel. On the second day, something special happened. Attending the day's opening with PM Dinesh was Sajith. Chief incumbent Asaji Thera invited him and gave him a warm welcome. The relics casket was taken by Sajith's top advisor, Lucky. Viewing the Vesak celebrations, Sajith especially commended those created with digital technology and augmented reality. Some believe the invitation to him to Gangara Maya could be a signal of what is going to happen in politics in the near future. Sajith doesn't hesitate to pick whatever Ranil drops. Also, if anyone wants to hurt Ranil, the choice is Sajith. That one should not be unaware of that. He may be patiently waiting amid all those to become the country's leader. SLPP breakaways to leave country. Several MPs in the SLPP who had planned a journey with the big boss are likely to give it up. The reason is that the party is hesitant about it. Some of them are even thinking of migrating after the election. It is going to be goodbye to politics for a few too. All these is because they cannot return to the SLPP. With strong party sentiments against accepting them back, they are trying to reach out to the national organiser. But... That one's predecessor keeps a list of the deserters so that they will not be accepted back. The latest is that they are eyeing Lanza's alliance. The above was from the gossip column of Deshire. In the meantime, the SLPP is holding a public rally in Thalawa and Nuradapura tomorrow, to be followed by a series of grassroots-level meetings to be attended by 12,000 young and women members. Although the party is yet to make it official, Supporting Ranil in the event he contests is under consideration. In the meantime, Hakim's SLMC and Mano's TPA are reportedly making their election plans. Presently allied with the SJB, both are yet to take a decision about the next election. In the north, the ITAC's Central Committee met last Sunday and decided to defer a decision until the election is announced. Its senior vice president, Sivanyanam, has told Daily Mirror that they would keep a tab for the policies of mainstream candidates. However, a group of Tamil parties called DTNA wants to field a candidate of their own even as some other parties are asking the people to go for an election boycott. One thing is clear. Candidates in the fray and the candidate with the highest public support cannot be determined until after a couple of weeks elapse from the date of announcement. Such is the deep sense of uncertainty that prevails everywhere. That's it for today.